sales perspective, we're not really seeing a decompression of our cap rates yet. So we, we definitely are seeing our investors paying around the same price and being comfortable with that. Our group does a lot of sale leaseback work, so we're definitely seeing uh, the corporations out there and a lot of our clientele looking to unlock equity with their assets and take advantage of the rates that are still in place and the, the appetite of a lot of investors that are out there. Something that we are seeing uh, internationally that's been interesting is just the foreign money coming in from China has been kind of on hold for some time, and we're seeing that start to uh, kick up again. And Japanese money as well has been very interested in logistics, so we're hearing a lot about that. And I know that a lot of our groups that work in the industrial component of the business, which is obviously affecting us, it's also augmenting what we're doing by, we talked about this a little bit, but we can touch on that briefly, but just that last mile of delivery from Amazon to these centers and some creative uh, uses that are being put in there in order to get the product into the, the client's hands, into the customer's hands. So uh, those are some of the things we're seeing right now. I think that going forward in 2018, we're going to still see a lot of appetite for investments. I think we're going to still see a lot of sales and transactions happen. Uh, I can't tell you what I see for third and fourth quarter 2018, but I'm very optimistic for the entire year. Uh, come back to me in 2018, December, and I'll, I'll tell you how it all went. But uh, and maybe we'll be out there again and talking about how 2018 was for and we'll tell you a little bit about 2019. What I'd like to close with and then open it up to Q&A is, what do you guys see as the big disruptor for 2018? Is it tech? Is it the, uh, the new Amazon? Is it some really cool uh, Froyo spot? I'm kind of stuck in Froyo. I don't know. I guess I haven't done yet. <laughs> I believe, honestly, it's, it's CoStar and LoopNet and no competition and not being able to get mom and pops who are traditionally used to using LoopNet to look for spaces. They're now being held back unless they subscribe. Uh, I don't believe that, I think we need competition, and I'm also confused by the model of CoStar, and I think uh, there isn't a brokerage house sitting out here that isn't confused by it. What we do, and what we, you know, our transactions are volume, and what they want from each and every one of our brokers is, is just too much. It, it, we couldn't afford to be uh, CoStar customers. By the way, as brokers, Doing retail transactions, we don't particularly need CoStar. We don't need the analytics. But LoopNet, we need LoopNet. And if we don't need LoopNet, we need a commercial search, which we just had until, I don't know, two, three, four weeks ago. And that went down. And I believe that it's going to be a big problem for people to look at your sites. So when you're getting, you know, when you're looking for sites uh, out there and you've got three or four, you know, Mexican restaurants. You're no longer able to look at everything that's out there in the market. You're being told you have to subscribe. And the truth is, you're being told that you have to pay as a broker to put your listings up there. I mean, that's the content. That's your business. We're giving you your business. We're giving you the data. Every month you ask us for what we did in transactions, and every month I give it to you. And what do I get in return? Nothing. So, you know, perhaps I'm the bad guy saying it, but hopefully you all will too. Because I've had enough of it. You know what the right side is. Yeah, follow that then. <laughs> As a broker, I'll tell you the right side. Yeah. Now you have landlords who don't want to spend twelve, thirteen, fifty thousand dollars a year unless you have a property to buy wine. So it'd be more opportunities for us. That's one of the things I but it is it's, it's unfair because a lot of mom and pops now don't have that resource to find properties. Um, you know, I'm talking to a couple tenants that are moving from Washington State down to Southern California. Only means of looking at properties is really doing that. And uh, when you have to start paying a tremendous amount of money just to open a little nail salon for you know, or, or move your own business, your family business, it's, uh, you know, there's something wrong with that model. It needs to change. Great. Appreciate that. Trevor, you want to share? Um, ben? I'd say, really, you know, if we continue in this environment of the cap rate compression we've seen, I feel like it's going. It, it won't go well for investment moving forward. I think the, the difficult